Welcome to you, Hill. Thank you so much. You're in this movie, 1982, and it's about a man's struggle to protect his daughter from his wife's crack addiction. You should leave my wife alone. Or? I will. You were what? Huh? Mommy's not gonna be coming back for a while. It's really a, a powerful movie. Is it based on the life of the director, Tommy Oliver? Yes, yeah, so the, the writer-director, Tommy Oliver, um, grew up in a home where his mother was addicted to crack cocaine. And uh, he grew up in Philadelphia. And w what's amazing about this film is we actually shot the movie in the actual house where all of this really took place. And it's the first time in my career that I've actually done that, really shot at the you know, we shot in the home where he grew up. And, and so the, uh, the same neighborhood, the same place, the same rooms <clears throat> where many of the scenes actually took place. And, and it was very powerful and I, I think cathartic for him and, and a healing process for him to do this film. Um, but for me, it was wonderful. It was just it, to, to be able to play a character with so much complexity and so many, so many things to deal with um, a father trying to save his family. And in many ways, I felt Tim Brown is his name. He's a superhero. Yeah, and it really speaks to that period in the 1980s when yes. crack just really wreaked havoc on the inner cities yes. in America. It ravished, ravished uh, many urban centers across the country. Um, and, and it just, it, when you talk about addiction, when you talk about uh, crack, cocaine, it, it, it the, the residual damage it left in families is what this film explores. It's not following the mom who ultimately was addicted. The film follows the family and the residual damage that's left behind from the addiction, which I think is a, is a, it's a, a very interesting way to, to approach the problem. When I watched them, I was sitting there watching the screening of it and I was thinking, now this is an Oscar worthy performance. And then I started to wonder about the barriers <clears throat> that films have to go through to even get considered for the Oscars. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, here's the deal. Um, when you think about Oscars and you think about Oscar worthy, you know, it's, it's wonderful for you to say that. So thank you so much. In 1982, every film festival it played, uh, the reviewers in whatever city it was that would talk about uh, it's an Oscar worthy film, uh, the original screenplay, Oscar worthy, the. Uh, the very humbled and, and, and fantastic, they would say, but my performance as the lead actor, Troy Z, who plays my daughter, best supporting yes. actress. Wonderful performance, you know, breakthrough performance for her. But the, the process around gaining those nominations has to do with studios supporting and making an Oscar run. Um, and it's very difficult for independent films like 1982, even though the quality is by, by many people's accounts is Oscar quality to actually be considered for an Oscar run without the studio backing um, to, to market it as an Oscar film. And a lot of the studios will look at a film like this and say, wow, great film, let's put it straight to video, right? Yes, and so here's, here's, the, here's the problem. It's, it's the, the whole issue around the Oscar issue is not an Oscar problem. It's not the, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences because they're an, an organization that gives out awards. The problem is a pipeline issue. And, and that's why it's interesting that this discussion is coming up because the pipeline problem is when studios see a film like this, for whatever reason, um, it gets ghettoized, so mm -hmm, to speak. Mm -hmm. and, and rather than saying, you know what, this is a film where we really could do well because it was, you know, it's relatively low budget, so the cost of acquiring it wouldn't be that high. If we really want to break down the economics, um, the cost of acquiring it wouldn't be that high. The cost of marketing it would be more expensive than even acquiring the film, you know, to market it well. Yet, even though they see audiences give it a standing ovation at a film festival, for whatever reason, they say, audiences don't want to see this movie in the theaters. They want to see it on video. And that is where the questions start to rise as to why. And so if you start to look at African-American, at least African-American stories that are considered Oscar push worthy, because that's really what not Oscar worthy, but Oscar push worthy. Um, they seem to be f all films about race mm -hmm. what, or some type of racial strife, whether it's slavery, whether it's the civil rights movement, whether it's something that has to do inherently with race, rather than a film like 1982, 
which isn't about race at all. It's yeah. about addiction and a family trying to stay together. The, the, the troubling part of it is that um, do the studios that are willing to give Oscar marketing pushes to film, would they, if it's African Americans, will they only do that for films that center on race. The ones that are straight to video are immediately... They're not qualified. Quali so, so if you want to talk about qualification, yeah. they, they have to, the specific qualification elements for being an Oscar film or Oscar nominatable film, to, to qualify, you have to play at least seven straight days in a theater that sells tickets. It can't just be a screening, screening house. You have to play in a, a theater within Los Angeles County. Okay, so that's before you go to video. And you're doing that yeah, now. Yeah, we're doing that now. Okay. So, so, so 1982 is going to be qualified to be uh, nominated for an Oscar. We're going to screen it February 26th, which is Oscar weekend. And it's going to be at the, at the Lemley Fine Arts Theater on Wilshire Boulevard in Beverly Hills. Okay. And folks can come and buy a ticket, which we want them. If you know anybody in Los Angeles, Lee, please let them know. <laughs> but the idea is you want the influencers and decision makers and the gatekeepers to see this film as we, well. We right? want them to see the film because we're, we're, we're actually we're, we're showing the film um, at, a, at a pay theater in the backyard of the Oscars on Oscar okay. weekend. To, to make a statement that this is a film that deserves to be considered. Right. And, and, and hopefully the folks will come see it. Hopefully there'll be more people that react like you and say, hey, this is an Oscar-worthy film. Um, and maybe 1982 can be that little film that could. Okay, let's look at the broader picture. Okay. Um, it's a lot of this about the fact that, you know, when you see 92% of the Academy are white males, average age 62, 63 years old, there's a lot of this about African Americans and people in color, people of color in general, not having a seat at the table in terms of and not being able to green light films and not collaborating economically to make a film like 1982 right. uh, well, without okay. needing outside money outside the community. And what can African Americans and people of color do in Hollywood to change that themselves without looking at the Oscars to change okay. it for them? Well, certainly having more diverse membership of the Oscar voting body is a great thing. I mean, we have Cheryl Boone Isaacs, who's an African American woman who really runs the um, you know runs the Oscars so to speak the the organization um, she's working on that so I think that's gonna happen but you make a, a much better point it's not so much about the Oscars because I, I really do think that the people that are the members members of the Oscars they love film and they love storytelling so it's not really about the it's really about a, a studio system and the diversity of folks who uh, green light films who actually read the scripts and bring them up the food chain. So it's not even, in, in, in certain ways, it's not even the top, top executives. It's the folks lower on the totem pole. Hmm. Because, hmm. because you got to remember, the top executives at the studios are really only reading the scripts that the lower level development people actually push to them. That the folks at the agencies, and there's a very, very, there's a lack of diversity at our major agencies. Um, CAA, WME, um, United Talent Agency, UTA. These are all major, major agencies that represent talent. And then they push projects. So the question becomes, there's a lot of great writers out there that are African American, African American men, African American women. There are a lot of great writers out there that are Latino. There are a lot of great writers out there that are Asian. And there's, you know, um, Muslim writers. There are a lot of wonderful writers out there that are writing really good scripts. So it's not about the script problem. It's, it's actually about how this script, if, if I submit a script to you, to my agent, or and then the agent submits it to the studio, how that script starts to make its way up the line, and why are many of these stories getting stopped somewhere? It's at a glass ceiling. Why are they getting pushed to the side and not getting made by the studio? So therefore, the Oscars never even have a chance to vote on them because that film never gets made. And you've done all of these CSI and concussions. You even did the Fresh Friends, now you're seeing it. Well, well, just and speak about concussion. Let's talk about that real quick. I found a disease that no one has ever seen. When I was on the set shooting concussion, I was working with Will, and I was sitting there seeing his work and saying, this is, this is Oscar worthy. His performance is Oscar worthy. I still feel it's Oscar worthy. Um, yet again, he's playing a character that uh, is not about race. This is bigger than they are. It's mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. you know, 
uh, concussive head trauma and subconcussive trauma and, and all of these things. <clears throat> so again, it starts to beg that question, do folks only want to nominate projects that are specifically race-based if they see an African-American on the screen? Why can't they see this person just playing a character who's, who's in this case, a doctor who's the discover, you know, he made the discovery of CTE and called it CTE and, and such a beautifully done performance. And, 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 and I'll just say this because I love Will's performance in this so much and I was there firsthand to see it. It's very hard for a movie star for you to forget you're watching a movie star, particularly if, if they, they can't do physical changes like Matthew McConaughey and Dallas Buyers Club where you could lose so much weight that you look completely different. In this case, Will was playing a doctor. It's not like he could get emaciated or change himself <laughs> physically. Right. He did it through accent, because he had an accent, an African accent in the film. And he did it through mannerisms, which is much more difficult to do. And I challenge anyone, if you've watched Concussion, you'll see Will, at the beginning, you'll see that's Will Smith, but about two minutes into the film, you'll forget you're watching Will Smith, and you'll, and you'll, and you'll be watching this Dr. Ben and Omalu. And to me, that shows you Beautiful subtlety and you know superlative performance. And let's face it, Will Smith is one of the best. And he got overlooked this time. But the question now is going forward: What can, once again, what can African American actors and actresses and people of color do? Has there been even a discussion yes. or a meeting among the top? You know, when when well, Muhammad I, Ali yeah. decided that he wasn't going to go to Vietnam, right? He went and met with the top ten black athletes mm -hmm. in America, yeah. and they had a closed door meeting, and they came out and supported him. There was a strategy. When the University of Missouri football team decided we're not going to play, they talked to the coaches, they enlisted the support of faculty members, mm -hmm. and they had a plan. And they came out and put pressure on the university. And when a million dollars was on the line that president resigned. A name like Will Smith would bring in all of these people, and he does have the leadership yeah. potential to move a boycott forward. He right. could have done it, but he would need to do a little bit more planning. Well, is that possible, and is that the road well, that he should take? Well, I, you know, I think each individual has to make their own decisions. The, the, this, the idea of a boycott, again, it's an organization that gives awards. So it's it's not even about the Oscars. That's just my personal Yeah, you said that before. So, 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 right. it's not, so, so to me, what I do like about this idea of boycott and quotes is that it has us having this discussion. So it's raised this issue to actually go deeper and talk about what the real issue is, which is the pipeline issue. And, and so the boycott or, or, or the proposed boycott has served its purpose mm. to actually have a discussion about it. But at the end of the day, I mean, Chris Rock is the host in black. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah. you know <laughs> so much for I, that. So much right? for that. Exactly. So but, it's not. But, it's not but, I, and 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 I, I think that 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 a boycott based off some type of of, of race based grounds is is, is 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 it doesn't point us in the right direction. What 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 what, what we have to do is talk about what the real problem and is. and understand what Will and Jada's frustration and Spike's yes. frustration is. You are. A guy with three Ivy League degrees, you've written four bestsellers, you've, you've got this impeccable record as an actor. Um, have you experienced discrimination in, in Hollywood? In Hollywood, uh, certainly. I mean, you know. And what, what kinds? Well, the, 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 the obvious ways that as you're coming up and you read a script and you see a character that you know you could play so well. And you call your, your agent or you hear about it and you, and you say, hey, can you, can you get me in? And the response, you know, Hollywood is interesting that no one ever wants to really piss anybody off. So, <laughs> because they never know where you're gonna end up. So everyone's real That's careful. LA, baby. They, 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 everybody's <laughs> like, oh. so they never say what they really mean. And it would be much better if folks were just honest and say, you know, we're not gonna hire a black guy. We're not gonna let him play this role. And the, but what you get is, we love Hill. We love him. Um, <laughs> and, and they'll have you actually come in and audition and do all the work and the prep. And I've had situations where they've said, <clears throat> they've asked me to fly across the country to do a meeting, hearing later that th they already had an offer to somebody else. Hmm. And so they make you 
the, 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 it's very subtle. They make you feel like you have a seat at the table, knowing in the backdoor conversation that you really don't. Mm -hmm. They make you feel like you have an opportunity, knowing, because they don't want to say you don't have an opportunity, they certainly don't want to do it based off race, but knowing that they've already made an offer and they're closing a deal with somebody mm -hmm. else. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's that kind of disingenuous type of very covert um, thing. It would be much better if we were able to have a discussion like we're having, just let's talk about the issue, let's try to solve it. It'd be better if they said, you know what, um, we don't think that white folks want to buy a ticket to see a black lead in this movie. Okay. And then if that's the case, let's talk about that. It seems like the barriers to entry are coming down in television in certain yes. ways. Why isn't it happening in film? And, and it could be that there's been this vast commercial miscalculation about I, I, the the potential. Yeah, and everybody and, leans on the free market. And the demographic it, change that's I, occurred, if, right? If you, so, if you look at folks who are buying tickets, the vast majority in this country are, are diverse, and some type of, of diversity. Folks are, we, we'll go and support these films and sit in a the theater and pay, pay full price and buy popcorn and all of that. Final question, you running for office? Am I running for office? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm Have you thought about it? I've, I've, I've thought about it. You know, You're friends on. with Barack I, Obama, right? Yeah, I, I, I am. You know, I went to law school uh, with the president and uh, couldn't be more proud of him and the work that he's done. And, and I'll tell you, uh, I also went to the Kennedy School of Government. So obviously, right. uh, I have an MPA, a master's in public ministry. And public a law degree from and Harvard. And a law degree from Harvard. And so those things, you know, automatically, I'm interested in issues around politics. Um, yet, uh, you know, you never know. I, okay. I, I, I want to serve. I want to. I want to. I want to have impact and legacy in whatever positive way I can. Right now, I'm an actor. You're running. I can tell. <laughs> when you give that answer, that's what you that means. You never know. Make sure we break it As long it as you first. fund my campaign, I'll do it. you know, I, I don't have deep pockets like Donald okay. Trump, so I, I don't know if I can mount a mount a billionaire's campaign. All right. Well, keep us posted. I, Bill I'll Harper, thanks a, a lot, pleasure. brother. Thank you so Good much, man. I appreciate it, Lee.